Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to yet another exciting episode of the Vinny Eastwood Show. Broadcasting from New Zealand, the fabulous, the fluoridated, the Fukushima irradiated. Well, we don't know how Fukushima irradiates us because we stopped testing for radiation incidentally last year. At the end of last year, probably when radiation level tests were trying to spike or anything. I don't know about you, ladies and gentlemen, but I live life with my eyes open. And that means that I see a lot of things that really, really frustrate me. Kind of make me angry. Make me go to dark places. <laughs> you know, I, I don't know if anybody else is vibing what I'm selling here. Because I wake up in the morning and I'm really angry. Angry at everything. And it seems like there's no reason for it. And I, and I remember, you know, actually there is a reason for it. In fact, there's not just one. Uh, it's not just two. Is there, and there's a reason to be angry for everything. Isn't that interesting, right? It's a motivation thing. If you're not angry, you're not motivated to change the things that are going on that are frustrating you. There's a reason why you get angry. It's because you generally destroy things that make you angry. You change them in some way, perhaps, a little bit more peacefully than destroying them. And um, what's happening to me, I think, is I'm starting to lose my cool. You know, all of this... Joking and, and uh, carrying on and playing around like, uh, yeah, it's the lighter side of genocide. Ha ha ha. Don't laugh, you'll cry. Yeah, basically, it's just a... Th I don't know if you've noticed. I'm not... And I won't deny it if somebody accuses me of it. But it's basically just a thin veneer to cover up enormous amounts of rage that courses just beneath the arteries and the cockles of the heart. Right underneath the surface there. Very, very in touch with my rage places, ladies and gentlemen. I'm getting angrier and angrier. Day after frickin' day. For inexplicable reasons. But because I've got my eyes open. I'm looking at all the things around me. I'm hearing what people are saying. I'm watching what people are doing. In a lot of cases, I'm not. Kind of like in a bit of a black hole. Right? Because as soon as you say, oh, I've got my eyes open, somebody will just knock you right on your ass and say, really, have you heard about it? And you're like, no. I have no idea. Which frustrates you even more. You know? You get angry about uh, uh, messages from people that are just abusive. Just stupid. <sighs> people are always wrestling with their egos and everything. I'm narcissistic as hell, but mate, I don't even let my ego get in the way of having a decent relationship with somebody. I mean, you know, let's be peaceable about it. Let's be cool. Let's not be uh, 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 horrific and nasty and make stuff up. Hmm. Let's not call each other names. Let's let's try to, you know, be human, gentlemanly, reasonable, etc. Whatever frickin' adjective you think you need to say. Whether it be religious monocles, monocles, <laughs> it's a singular eyeglass. How did that even come into that? Maybe I meant monologue, a religious monologue. Is that comforting? I don't think so. But apparently a whole lot of people spend a lot of time in churches listening to things. And believe me when I tell you, you carry your church with you. Whatever you're sitting there listening to all day and everything, that's your preacher. That's your, your uh, representation of the world and your God out there. And, uh, you know, if you're sitting there listening to somebody uh, 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 raging out and getting really aggressive and everything of that nature, hey, hey, oh my God, if everything's so fracked up, it's horrible, it's terrible. And you look outside and it's like, <whistles> there's nothing going on, right? And all this fear and all this angst and everything is starting to build up. Every single movie you watch is violent or it's got zombies or the end of the world or somebody freaking being uh, murdered by their, by, their, uh, by their closest sibling or anything like that. It's, it's like, 
it's like they're trying to squeeze the love and togetherness and, and, and the happy f- feelings of wonder and, and consciousness and everything out of everybody's lives in every single way, every single day, bombarding us with the radiation and, 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 and goodness knows what freaking other chemicals and, and everything. You know, and you got people who get born and, and they've got like traces of 200 freaking plus chemicals in, in, the, <laughs> in the cords, <laughs> you know? I, you know, it's, it's, it's just unbelievable. We're totally saturated in things that are bad for our health. Even even uh, those of us who know what is bad for our health really know and know about the GMOs to stay away from and the flora and everything like that. Uh, half of us are, are, are like uh, really unhealthy ourselves, you know? And, and it's because there's like this massive uh, quantity of knowledge that we haven't even uh, had time to absorb yet. Because when you're reading stuff, you don't even understand it. When you're interviewing people, you don't freaking understand it. You haven't deeply researched into it. You haven't read it over a hundred times. You haven't had ten conversations with twelve different people with different points of views and differing opinions and evidence stacks and things of that nature in order to compound a point of view. People we are running on frickin' autopilot most of the time. I know I am. I have no idea what the hell is going on. I'm, I'm prepared to admit it. And a whole bunch of other people are not prepared to admit they don't know what, what the hell is going on. Are you prepared to admit it yourself? You know, that there's so much going on that at the end of the day, no matter how good an idea you have and a handle on things, you really have no freaking idea because there's just that much knowledge. And all you can do, really, the only thing I can actually feel confident about is things that I've already done and things that I reckon I can probably easily do. You know, from doing radio shows and videos and ranting, etc. or whatever, you know, this is like, no problem, man. I can do that, I can do that. And somebody says, you know, Vinny, you could be an Olympic gymnast. And it'd be like, <laughs> you know, you're not, pre- I'm not prepared. Sadly, I don't think any of us are prepared, really, to change our lives again, all right? Because I think maybe this is, is sort of like a, a, a 29-year-old midlife crisis kind of episode going on in my brain right now because I'm so freaking pissed off that I, that I just think, you know, maybe I am having a, a little bit of a midlife crisis. Maybe I'm going crazy because I'm thinking about how much of a pain in the ass that it is to actually be uh, 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 surviving, helping humanity, getting all the praise and thanks and being able to travel around and, and interview people and talk about all this interesting stuff and what have you and actually really contribute something to the uh, broad base of humanity. And how could that possibly be a bad thing? Here's why. Because everybody who doesn't have the same objective as you, comes after you and starts abusing you and starts giving you all their negativity and all their negative energy, all their questioning, all their ninnying, and and you become really judgmental. Really judgmental if if you've if you've got so many people displaying their opinions of you is that it's it's sort of like a defense mechanism is that as so, as soon as somebody criticizes you, you have to hit them back with the criticism. You, you know? And this is something I've realized happened a long time ago, (laughs) is that two people will be arguing. One person will say, you only think this because of such and such and blah, 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 blah in your life, which I know nothing about. And and you reply by saying, well, you're only accusing me of that because of such and such and blah, 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 blah blah, in your life, which I know nothing about. So you've got two, two, two people who know nothing about each other, telling each other who each other is and not listening to each other. (laughs) It's, It's freaking stupid. This is what's happening. We're not freaking listening to each other. I feel like I'm not being listened to. You know, isn't that an ironic for for a radio show host? <laughs> it's like, oh, I don't feel like people are listening to me. And it's not in, in, in sort of the way like that. It's more uh, on the everyday level. Uh, it's like, you're not listening to me. You know, I'm telling you something really important. I'm telling you something that's true. I'm telling you something that could actually help you save your life or something like that if you just put in a little bit of effort. And then, of course, ignoring all the efforts and everything that I could be putting into other areas of my life where I'm falling short. <laughs> and we all do that, don't we? You know, am I, over, am I overly critical of myself? Probably. I have to be. You know, if you're a loudmouth piece of crap, uh, uh, from time to time. I'm incredibly selfish. I've stolen things, you know. Gave them back, you know. I realised it didn't belong to a mainstream media person. <laughs> you know, and I realised, oh my god, I just stole a microphone from an activist. I actually feel real bad about that. It was like uh, this um, uh, uh, Casper thing, 
and uh, when you when you broke ass and, and everything, and I remember like back in my childhood, I used to like steal money out of my mum's wallet and I used to buy food with it and everything. I got really really fat as a kid and getting abuse at school all the time, and it was and it was like stealing things became kind of like a stress coping thing or, or whatever. I'm not I'm not sure what the hell actually caused it, but I was prone to like taking things and I, and I took this thing. It was uh, I just finished filming this conference about. Um, so there's a deep confession here. You won't hear any other radio show host fr- freaking confessing this kind of stuff to you. That's why you know you can trust me. Because if I actually do something bad, I'll confess to it. And believe me, I will punish myself for it. You know? Except if you're an authority figure and you're actually going to take my freedom away. Because <laughs> at the end of the day, I think that I punish myself for the things that I do. And I repair things uh, that I've broken. You know? I I, I really do make an effort. The the law should really only um, come into play when somebody's actually really been dishonest. There's an old saying. You can trust a thief, but you can't trust a liar. So it was at Casper, I think. Uh, this is Lady uh, Maria Bradshaw, wonderful woman. She's like uh, talking about her, her son and, and all of these other people that have uh, lost their children to uh, drugs and, and uh, uh, bad reactions, suicides, you know, all of that kind of stuff. Nobody else talking about the truth on that, on that issue, certainly not in the media side of things. So, you know, I, I, I actually endeavoured quite, quite hard to put that whole two-and-a-half-hour conference uh, um, uh, as edited up as I could do uh, up on my website. And uh, as I was uh, about to leave, I noticed that there was this microphone there. Now, there were a hell of a lot of mainstream media people there at this uh, conference. And I thought to myself, oh, my God, one of these mainstream media scumbags has left his microphone with a little stand and everything. Not like a tall stand or anything, just like one of the tiny little tripod ones that you just pop on a desk, you know. And I was like, man, I'll I'll nick this. Yeah, grabbed it and walked out with it. Didn't say nothing to anybody. And then uh, I got it home, and I, st- I put it in a box just under underneath my desk. I'm not like, hiding it or anything. I just had a bad feeling, like I'd done something wrong. And I refused to use that microphone, which was much better than the, the microphones I did have. And I think like a couple of months later, I get this phone call, and there's this lady on the other end from Casper. Uh, asking, did I know what happened to the microphone that night? And uh, I played it off and I said, yeah, yeah, oh my God, yeah. Um, I was hoping somebody would call me about this. I actually kind of was. And uh, I was going to a protest at that point. And so I said, you know, I'll, I'll, t- I'll take it in the car with me. And uh, I'll, I'll, I'll meet you in town and I'll, I'll hand the uh, microphone back to you. You know, it's perfectly well preserved. Hasn't been damaged or uh, or even used, just been stored, stolen. <laughs> you know, honestly, I feel freaking ashamed of myself, and I and I and I get these flashbacks all the time about bad stuff that I've done like that, where no actual real harm uh, came into it, but I still feel really really bad about it, and I get that all the time. It's like a shock to the spine sort of thing. I don't know if you've ever had this sensation where you go, oh, for, for just just sort of randomly. You might you might have seen other people do it. <laughs> it's it's like I really beat up on myself about these things that I've done, even though I've done you know it's quite a quantitatively large amount of good. It's not all the good things that that I remember when I'm uh, by myself and and uh, and thinking about things. You know, it's always the bad things that happen to me. Has that happened to everybody else as well? I don't know. But I think I, I'm <sighs> freaking talking about myself too much, of course. But at the end of the day, I'm still really effed off at the entire system. And at the same time, feeling really guilty <laughs> about things that I've done. And... I'm not sure if I'm just, like, getting in my own way. Am I overthinking it? Or am I actually going through a reasonable process of analysing my own actions, their implications, their consequences, and then trying to adjust my behaviours accordingly so I don't pull off that kind of BS in the future, you know? 
Or am I just running myself into the ground by being far too honest, as has happened to me in in almost uh, uh, all of my relationships and the rest of my life? If you tell people what you really, really think, if you especially if you tell them what you really think about them, you no longer have a uh, a friend in general. You know, it's a, it's a sad but true fact that there's so many people who will literally judge you on one statement, one phrase, and throw everything out the window. It's sort of the same thing that I do to myself. I look at all the good that I've done, all the great things that I've uh, uh, said and helped to elucidate to people and, and help them to have broader understandings about stuff that they never even conceived of in the first freaking place through thousands of different conversations with people from all over the world and all over the country. But that's not the thing that I remember. I remember the one time when I did something that I disagree with and then disregard all the rest. It's the exact same thing that happens with listeners. You know, like I said, uh, 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 a week ago we had this big power cut and, uh, of course, I went to the uh, the organic cafe up the road uh, and there's a lady in there who recognized me from a uh, Zeitgeist meeting I was at a couple of years ago. And she said, oh, Evany, I don't really listen to your show anymore because the, you did uh, one show uh, one time uh, and you weren't talking <laughs> about the benefits of feminism. <laughs> like you know, we, we were kind of uh, denigrating and and uh, having a look at the, the CIA sponsorship and, and, and things of that nature behind the feminism movement, you know, on a factual basis. We're not, we're not freaking woman haters. All, th- all three of us were married at the time, you know. <laughs> It's like somebody accusing you of uh, racism or sexism or any or, or, or virtually any ism. If they accuse you with some kind of a name, they've lost the argument, in, in my opinion, because they're not actually arguing. They're just freaking name calling, like it's a uh, like it's a schoolyard game. It's a freaking game to these people. I don't I don't want a vibe like that, man. I'm not playing games with you, ladies and gentlemen. There's a reason why I confess all this stuff. It's because it's therapy for me to know that the bad and the good in me is out there freely for people to see in my own words. So if anybody talks trash about me behind my back, I can guarantee you I've said worse about myself on air. (laughs) All right. So in a weird way, I'm protected because I'm not actually really trying to trying to mess with you or anything like that. I'm just being honest. There is nothing wrong with that, in my opinion. And I I get, I'm starting to get a little bit egotistical about it. Because there's so many people who who criticize me and and say it's all about my ego and everything like that. Well, my egotism is a little bit of a part of it. I'm not going to deny that I I have a bit of an ego. It's not the reason I do what I do. The reason I'm doing what I do, bro, is because... Basically, I uh, experienced great pain and suffering at the hands of uh, the system. Others have suffered much worse. Some have not even lived through their pain and suffering. And I still haven't gotten over mine. And I don't think anybody ever really does. They just learn ways of coping with it. They say, build a bridge and get over it. But then they're only telling you that because they haven't freaking built the bridge and gotten over it themselves. They've just learned to freaking freeze in the waters of self-pity and just deal with it like a man. <laughs> you know, what's wrong with people? We're just totally out of touch. We're out of touch with each other. You know, we're all, all plugged into these smartphones and our computers and everything like that. You've got husbands and wives living in freaking different parts of their house and everything. And they're like ships in the night. They don't even have a relationship except with their computer and all their friends online that they never meet. They've got no real human contact anymore. So it's just... Makes us all feel lost. Makes me feel lost. How many times uh, have I, you know, thought badly of people just in general? You know, like, oh, slaves, friggin' scum. Countless times. You know, you see articles in the, in the paper or anything of, of, of people being really stupid or really callous or, or anything like that. And it, and, and it concocts a view that basically there's me and the scum, us and the zombies, that kind of thing. This, this us versus their mentality. Now, now there is an us versus them mentality, but the the public aren't. Uh, 
How can I how can I really describe this delicately? The the answer is I can't. The public aren't in, in, in full control of their own minds, of their own actions, of their own lives. They can't be. They haven't been for quite some time. So, several generations, in fact, of, of uh, dependency, public education, and uh, brain control, mind washing, and uh, and and very simple uh, uh, diplomacy has allowed people to basically accept more or less any living condition without question. That's more or less it. Their lives are controlled. And their minds are controlled too. All of us are, to to some degree. I'm not going to uh, lie about that. Some degree, we're all we're all under a little bit of mind control. And if you don't think that you do, you're lying to yourself. Okay, brain ain't got no firewalls. You see an image, boom, you have a, you have a mental reaction. It happens to everybody all the time. Anything you see gets decoded and. Uh, an impression comes up. So there's many, many ways to manipulate your mind. And it really effed off with people who are so freaking sure of themselves. I mean, what? I mean, come on. You're, you're, you're living on a planet that has infinite quantities of knowledge. Huge, long tracks of history, ancient history, etc. Massive cosmos around you, the you know, spions with telescopes, etc. Microscopic organisms. You've got all manner of degrees of study that you could get into that you know nothing about currently. And you think that you know it all. You think that you've heard it all. You think that you know enough so that you don't need to learn anything. Bro, grow up. Your learning experience didn't stop because you stopped going to school. Because there was a summer holiday break or, or anything like that. This is what I'm talking about. About walking around with your eyes freaking open. Sweet mercy. There are so many things happening. Even, even me not following the news. Just thinking about things that, I'm, that I've, I've seen. Or editing lectures about uh, electromagnetic frequencies. And, and, and all these different aspects of, of, of our health system that's under attack. And eugenics and depopulation and therapy. And the chemtrails. And, the good, and all the truth are infighting. And the half-truth movement. And everything is just buzzing around in here. It's driving me freaking nuts. It's like a, a, it's like a, 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 a busted open hornet's nest in my brain place it's it's not pleasant it stings and it buzzes with freaking irony and it's just not funny sometimes i go nuts absolutely mental i mean as i said a very angry person and i yell and i scream something awful it's like I throw tantrums. That's how, that's how freaking crazy I'm getting. Because I, I just haven't been letting it out effectively. I haven't been honest with myself. I haven't been true enough to myself. I've been given the platform on my show to absolutely everybody else to say whatever the hell they want. And I've been uh, trying to play to everybody's tune and, and um, give people, you know, uh, uh, the respect and the coverage that they deserve for all their ideas and things of that nature. To the point where I didn't want to listen to anybody at all anymore. And I just wanted to be angry, you know. Have you, have you ever been in a, um, in a group of friends or anything, anywhere? And there's uh, a whole bunch of really talkative people who might, like, talk over others on occasion and what have you and, and you're sort of like the quiet person in the room and you try to get a word in here or there or, or maybe uh, talk about something a little bit in detail and you just get interrupted and you don't really get to say your piece and uh, it kind of happens again and again throughout the night or something I'm not sure if you've ever had a night like this uh, that's kind of like my job is to sit there and listen to people and uh, and get talked over as a polite radio show host I mean on Really, you're not supposed to interrupt your guests to talk over them. It's supposed to really be the other way around, in my opinion. Uh, but as it turns out, you become a punching bag for everybody else's stresses and complaints and everything that they now finally have this free platform to talk about in a, in a, in a fairly uh, uh, uncensored general kind of way. 
And so I'm sitting here and I'm listening to all these people with all of their eclectic problems from uh, hundreds of different fields of studies with uh, PhDs and doctor doctorates and, and uh, goodness knows what qualifications. He used to work in the government, local government, corporate, private sector, oil industry, CIA, freaking uh, 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 private security forces, mercenaries, assassins and, and uh, 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 discoverers, scientists, authors, filmmakers, radio show hosts, occult, occult freaking uh, uh, researchers, some of the greatest philosophers and thinkers of our times, and researchers into psychological conditions and drugs and, and war and armaments and absolutely everything. It's like you're overflowing the pot with knowledge sometimes, don't you think? What happens when you shovel down stuff and you don't have the time to chew it? <laughs> you know? That's kind, of, that's kind of what it feels like. Like uh, you need to take time out to digest. Or to uh, repeat things back. Speaking of repeating things back, I'm going to take a quick break in a wiki lake. We'll be right back. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Vinnie Eastwood Show at the uh, dot com. Uh... You give me a moment. I just kind of need to uh, plug my services for a bit. I I do need uh, to help people in order to be able to survive, and the relationship is reciprocal. So, if you need coverage of some description, you know, New Zealand or America or Australia or whatever, and you're talking about stuff that the government won't let you say, or the mainstream media won't give you the uh, the platform, or uh, anything like that. Anything outside of the mainstream that is true and ain't full of crap, and you've got like a little meeting or some somewhere in Auckland, or maybe around the country or whatever you want to uh, fly me around. I'm not sure about the international travel thing, but you know that'd be nice. It'd be it'd be interesting to trial out and see if I can actually leave the country. <laughs> See if I'm on, on Bush's old no-fly list or something, you know. It'd be funny. But, yeah. I can help, man. Trust me. I've got cameras, I've got a microphone and everything. I, I might be kind of intrusive when I'm filming your you presentations, etc. But I edit myself out afterwards. And uh comes away with two camera uh, angles and really good sound. So, at the end of the day, um, it's going to be quite nice and uh, easy for everybody involved <clears throat> so what i need really ladies and gentlemen is to be invited to things you know if you talks presentations or uh, uh, political party meetings and things of that nature you know just hit me up on facebook or the contact page on the vinnieeastwoodshow.com and, and invite me you know i'll either be able to uh come or i won't i won't necessarily charge you for it it'd be really lovely if, if i'm filming your conference or something like that if you're making money out of it that you can give me i don't know 150 bucks 250 bucks or something you know bit of a mates rates thing there whatever but i will do it for free if you need me to if you if you've got no money to pay me no worries man you know, it's it's like a whole weekend's work, putting up hours of presentations, two camera angles and everything. Oof. It's a lot of work, but I do it. You know, there's not too many, um, let's just say there's not too many opportunities uh, for people of an activist budget to get their film, their, their stuff documented let alone get it uploaded. There's plenty of people um, who I've seen over my years of experience in uh, public meetings, protests, political party meetings, etc. Plenty of people who come and film them. Plenty. And there's usually only one out of all those conferences that I've been to. Usually only one. Almost exceptionally be more than one. Would upload the entirety of a public meeting. Or a, or, a, or a big political speech and things like that. I do. That's me. In terms of New Zealand. There's, re, there's just nobody else. There's no, nothing egotistical about it. It's a verifiable fact. You go find me somebody. Anywhere. In this country. Who... Spends as much hours at it that I do. Produces the hours upon hours of content. Of important information. And made freely available to people through YouTube and a website. That you don't have to pay for. You know? There's just nobody. 
in this country doing that. It's unfortunate. I'm not saying, you know, nobody does anything. I'm just saying I do it way more than everybody else combined. So compared to me, they're not doing much. And it's not because, um, you know, they're lazy, etc. I'm not going to make judgments. I don't even know um, uh, what these people do in their personal lives, if they still have jobs or, or anything like that. But I, I went in whole hog, I quit my job, and, and, I, and I started basically going out there and helping people because they needed help. All these activists and everything like that, they don't even know how to use Skype. I'm teaching them now. I just taught uh, Penny Bright, long-time activist. I've known for like five years or something like that. Uh, how to uh, record... Oh, sorry, sorry. How to upload a video to YouTube. A very first YouTube video with a, with a new YouTube channel and everything like that. You can teach an old public watchdog new tricks. Mm-hmm. These are the things I can do. I can help people. And uh, the, the way that I want to help people, mostly, is not just doing the job for them. I also want to actually teach you how to do the job for yourself so that you don't need me anymore. Okay? The, the objective of my career is to make myself obsolete and then move on to somewhere else where I can help better humanity. Because I believe that citizen journalism and contributing to the wider public sphere of available knowledge is one of the most important jobs in this frickin' realm of existence. If people don't have appropriate information that is researched, <clears throat> backed up, <clears throat> verified, <clears throat> and not coming from mainstream media sources, I mean, isn't it not self-evident? Everything's falling apart. It's coming apart at the freaking seams. It's an extraordinary mess of crap work out there, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm going to assure you that there are meetings and, and town halls and, 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 and little uh, uh, conferences and things like that being put, over, put on all over the world that barely any of you hear about. All right? Plenty that I don't hear about. But the very small percentage, the 1% of, 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 let's say, conferences and things of that nature that are talking about alternative stuff that happens just in my home city of Auckland that I cover will blow your frickin' mind a thousand times over. So you can imagine... What they would be like if there were a thousand Vinnie Eastwoods in this country, you know, that have helped just to school them, you know, tell them don't waste time on that, you know, do this, get your content out. Don't worry about the editing details because then you'll sit there and you'll have 10 unfinished videos six months later. <laughs> you need that video up now, bro. There was a protest yesterday soon as humanly possible, while people are still searching about it, while the people who actually went to the protest will, will, will still be looking for uh, videos and, and things of that nature to come out. It's not that freaking difficult. As long as you quit messing around. All right? I quit messing around because I realized I had nothing left to live for. All right? You know, Fukushima, freaking uh, 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 Gulf of Mexico, or the chemtrails, and the EMF wireless radiation, and the fluoride in the water, and the vaccines, and freaking world government plans, and everything. We're freaking dead, ladies and gentlemen. We're, we're dead. All right? So I was like, well, bugger it. If I'm dead anyway, I might as well just make a difference instead of, of, of being upset about it. And I might as well help some people who are actually trying to save human life from pain, suffering, fear, and death. Mm -hmm. it's amazing what we'll do if we're, if we're forced into a tight corner I don't know how to get out of this though alright I'm basically locked in here I'm a slave to this microphone and this desk sometimes it F's me off but hey at the end of the day this is my sentence <clears throat> I'm sentenced to help people share their pain and their joy their discoveries and ideas to people who are wise enough to listen through to the end without judgment or a short attention span getting in the way of the truth. That's why these interviews are long form generally. That's why I don't interrupt the guests. It's because you can hear my ideas freaking any time. You hear me every show. 
but for that one show with that one person is coming and you know that's their show and i'm just the uh the the, the friendly douchebag with a microphone here to make your stay more enjoyable would you like a cup of tea sir you know that kind of thing i try to make everybody laugh and have a fun time and enjoy their life while they're learning about themselves being exterminated and enslaved okay there's nothing inherently wrong with that is there see every single silver lining has a cloud and it's just beautiful and it's cumulative like a humulus or is it a cumulus i don't know where i'm accumulating that, that knowledge from <clears throat> regardless I need your support, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, really. Have I not given enough? Have I not proven my worth? Have I not served the community long enough? Five long years, ladies and gentlemen, I've been supported by your donations and uh, uh, people who are coming on board and, and basically giving me a donation for advertiser and sponsorship and, and, and things of that nature in order to keep the show on the air because they believe. No, 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 they don't believe. They know that I will keep putting out information. Not small quantities of it either. Large, swole... <laughs> large swollen rivers of information from people from uh, eclectic fields that you couldn't even name if you had a two-hour show to just list them that's what we talk about on this show and we give that all out to people free you don't have to pay for it i mean you got to pay for your internet connection maybe uh 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 whatever else but at the end of the day you have thousands upon thousands of hours of YouTube videos and radio content with some of the most mind-bending and life-changing stuff you will ever hear in your life. And it's actually fun to listen to. It's actually enjoyable. That's the thing that I notice is very different about when I'm listening to my show versus other people's show. The other shows, they, they're great. And they're profound. And they're really powerful. And they make me think. And they make me feel enriched. But they also make me stressed. And I, and I feel like, um, like, like drained at the end of them. And I listen to my show. And at the end of it, I don't feel that. I get all the other same reactions during the rest of it. But I'm also having a few laughs here and there. You know, and it's not just because I like the sound of my own voice. This is verifiable. There have been many, many people who have commented on this. Fastest two hours in talk radio. Seriously, by the end of listening to all of this stuff, no matter how scary it is, you actually feel better about it. Because not only do you uh, know how to laugh at it, because it's really scary information at the end of the day, but you get to hear more of it tomorrow. And again and again. And you will have a geometric growth in your knowledge of the world. Because you're not having that pressure and strain put on you. Now, this might be ironic, considering the pressure and strain that it puts me under, but at the end of the day, name me one host who really does a comedy show at the end of the day, kind of like me, but talks about all of the scary, profoundly uh, amazing stuff. No, nobody really comes to mind. There's, there's a few variants, you know, like a, a, a John Stewart, like comedian esque type thing maybe uh lewis black who talks a little bit about politics maybe some bill hicks but at the end of the day we're not talking about long form interviews where you actually get really informed at the end of it 